senior class. Please stand. Lord. 
Joseph bless her. As I see my hands. And you will worship facing your holy temple. And say to them, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Most holy is your name. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten 
into this kind of trouble. The word of the Lord. Luther High School North has been celebrating a spirit of renewal. Among the important points of the renewal is the strengthening of our institutional relationship with our alumni. Tonight, for the ninth time, we recognize one whose life before and since graduation from these halls represents the exceptional achievement of this school's educational goals and desires for our seniors tonight. We are presenting such a role model in the person of a 2007 graduate of Luther High School North, Mr. Andrew Schaefer. If you would turn to the back of your program, it is easy to see that Andrew is a true product of the Lutheran school system. Our present mission statement is focused on one being a Christian servant leader. And as one can see, Andrew fits the mission statement like a glove. Andrew is a true role model of servanthood to others and using his musical talent to the glory of God. As you read through the bio, you will come to realize just how many LHN alumni Andrew has come into contact with so far. We are grateful that his parents, also Luther alums, made the decision to send Andrew to us. This year, Andrew graduated from St. Olaf College in Minnesota. This coming year, Andrew will be attending Yale Institute of Sacred Music on a full tuition scholarship. It has been our pleasure to have had Andrew play for our graduations for the past several years. Ladies and gentlemen, the alumnus of the year, Mr. Andrew Schaefer. trustees, faculty, staff, graduates, students, parents, alums, and guests. I think that covers just about everyone. I've been playing this graduation service, as he said, for some years, 10 in fact, and I have to say, without fail, it has rained in the morning and become very humid and hot in the afternoon. It's our fate. So I'll try to keep this as brief as I possibly can. Over the past 35 years, my family has been deeply woven into the fabric of this community. As he said, both of my parents, all of my aunts and uncles, and my two siblings are graduates of Luther North, and so needless to say, I feel humbled and blessed to receive this award. Tonight, I'd like to say a few words about Johann Sebastian Bach. Now, for those of you wondering why I would take the time to talk about J.S. Bach in a hot, crowded, rowdy gymnasium, when the service will already last well over an hour and a half, I ask you, did you honestly think you could ask a Lutheran church organist fresh out of college to speak and not have to hear about J.S. Bach? Now, before you all lose interest, I have a few fun facts for you. He wrote over 1,120 compositions for organ, choir, and orchestra, and solo instruments, and three of these compositions were included upon, on the Voyager spacecraft in the form of a golden record to represent our hope, determination, and goodwill as a society. For you parents out there, you should know that he was a very busy husband, had 20 children. Can you imagine that? 20 children. Unfortunately, only nine of them survived, but can you imagine raising nine children or putting them through Luther North, as I'm sure J.S. Bach would have done if he lived in Portage Park? For those of you who are troublemakers while well, here at Luther North, alums and students alike, you should know that Bach was thrown into prison for a month for showing disrespect to the Duke of Weimar, his boss. He was allegedly seeking illegal employment elsewhere. 
And for those of you who like sword fighting, you should know in his early 20s, he challenged a bassoonist to a duel because he accused him of slander. So you're probably asking yourself, what does J.S. Bach and Luther High School North have in common besides the fact that obviously they are both Lutheran? Well, you should know that on a more serious note, Bach was a deeply devout Christian and is often referred to as the fifth evangelist. He did not compose his, in, his music for entertainment value, but to express his genuinely profound faith in God, thus serving God by serving others. In fact, he once stated that the aim and final end of all music should be none other than the glory of God and the refreshment of the soul. If he is not paid to this, it is not, it is not true music, but diabolical bawling and twanging. I wonder what he'd have to say about Lady Gaga. In accordance with his philosophy, at the top of every single piece of music he ever wrote, he wrote the phrase, in nomine Jesu, which means, in the name of Jesus. At the end of a composition, if he was happy with it, he would sign it, Soli Deo Gloria, which you Latin scholars would know as, to God alone be the glory. So here's where LHN comes in. I can't help but think that a Lutheran North education can be summed up by the phrase, soli deo gloria, to God be the glory. Everywhere you look around this building, you will see signs of this commitment to servanthood. I mean, literally, everywhere you go in this building, you will see above the door, except for this room, unfortunately, a plaque that reads, the mission of Luther High School North is to serve God by developing productive and responsible Christian servant leaders for church and society. Graduates, if you learn one thing from here, I'm sure that's what they want you to know. This is what makes the Luther North education unique and worth the money. Of course, this education begins first and foremost with the service of the faculty and staff. All of you graduates and alums have benefited from these women and men who tirelessly give up their time and talent to serve God by serving you. They accomplish this not just by providing you with the best education they possibly can, but with a plethora of extracurricular activities, most of which you'd only find in larger schools. I was reminded of this recently when I was viewing the new promotional video, which you can find on luthernorth.org, or I guess it's Go Luther. That's the one you want to use, yeah. If you haven't seen it yet, I actually encourage you to go home and watch it because it makes an exceptional case for Luther North education. It states at the end of the video that Luther North has always encouraged its students to become someone big. Seriously now, where can you play tenor sax in the jazz band, shortstop for varsity baseball, sing tenor and Luther singers, volunteer for SAD and be president of National Honor Society, just to name a few of the dozens of activities that were available to you while you were here. Yeah, I know it's a bit cliche to reiterate, but students and alums, think about it for just a moment. How have you benefited from your participation in these programs, and how has Luther North and the wider community benefited from your participation in these programs? I know that the impact of my Luther North experience didn't hit me until I went off to St. Olaf College as a lowly freshman, and I was talking with some of my friends about activities we had been involved with in high school. Many of my friends were smart, outgoing people, very involved, and had come from large suburban or city schools. I was shocked to find out that many of them were only allowed to participate in one, two, maybe if they were lucky, three extracurricular activities, if those at all. Upon hearing that, I felt truly blessed to have come from Luther North. And rest assured, graduates, the impact of these activities will continue to surprise you throughout the rest of your life. But more than just offering you an education and some extracurricular activities, the faculty and staff of this school have taken the time to get to know each and every single one of you personally, like it or not. And thus you have been deeply cared for and loved over your time here. I'll take one minute to share a brief story because I think it's indicative of this commitment. As I was a freshman at St. Olaf, um, I started dating uh, another freshman there who was from Naperville and graduated from Naperville Central. 
And she was coming over to my house to visit for the day, and in the afternoon we went out driving around the northwest side, and I was showing her all of my haunts, and we stumbled upon Portage Park, and I said, oh, you know, I went to Luther High School North here. She said, oh, well, let's go drive past. I said, well, we can do better than that. We can, we can go and go inside, and you can get a little tour of the building. She said, you'll never be able again, and I know you won't be able again. So we went up to the door, of course, uh, buzzed me in, and Dr. Daly came out of his office, introduced himself as the principal, and gave us a little tour, gave her a little history, and we met some of the faculty. As we got back into my car, she looked at me bewildered. How in the world were you able to get in there? And how does your principal know your name? I said, well, that's just Luther North for you. In a few short moments, you graduates will join the more than 11,000 Luther North alums scattered throughout the globe. Rest assured that you will find this alumni network to be healthy and close-knit and supportive, to say the least. I can honestly say that two of my most significant mentors in life are Luther North grads. Paul Lindblad, class of 1971, took me under his wing while I was a student here, taught me how to sing, taught me the basics of choral accompaniment, and taught me some, gave me my start as a conductor, which, believe me, was a huge leg up before going off to St. Olaf. When I got to St. Olaf, I was pleasantly surprised or shocked to find out that one of our esteemed choral professors was a St. John Montrose grad and Luther North grad from 1958, Dr. Robert Schultz. After bonding briefly over our time at Luther North, he and his wife Cora became like second grandparents to me, supporting me at every concert I did and had me over for dinner almost once a month. These two men, like the thousands of Luther North alums, are truly living out their vocations as, Luther, as Christian servant leaders, building on the foundation that Luther North laid for them many years ago. It's my hope that we can all find a place in our lives where we can take someone under our wing and give God glory through service to others. Many of you are about to go off to college, some of you into careers, others in the military service, and some of you don't know what you'll be doing in two hours, and that's fine. But whatever you're doing, Luther North is about to send you out with a challenge to let your light shine in new, exciting ways. Wherever you go, don't forget the values you learned from your alma mater or nurturing mother. Make Luther North proud by your shining examples of Christian servant leadership. I pray that God richly blesses you all as you embark on your lifelong journeys. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to all family, friends, alumni, other friends of Luther North, and most importantly, welcome graduates. It's a big night. I see they uh, sandwiched me between the alumni of the year, our salutatorian and our valedictorian. Okay, guess they're trying to make everyone forget what I have to say. We'll see, hopefully I can say something memorable and keep it brief. I, I truly am honored to have the privilege to speak this evening, but I do have a little confession to make. This really is kind of a tough night for me. I just honestly don't really know how to feel right now. You see, just like these graduates, I started my Luther North career four short years ago. And just like these graduates, my Luther North career ends tonight. Like this group, I will be moving on to a new school, a new adventure, a new path in my life. As I said before, this night is not easy, and I expect it isn't easy for our graduates either. On the one hand, I'm excited to be moving on to a new phase of my life. I hope every last one of our graduates is excited at the prospect of a new beginning as well. Whether the, wherever the next part of their journey takes them, it certainly will be exciting. But there will be something strange about not entering these halls next year. I, like these graduates, have been very blessed to be a part of this school for four years. Sure, we have all had our times where we complained about this place. For the graduates, it was likely around the time a big paper was due. For me, always when spring fever or senioritis hit and I just couldn't get anybody to do anything. Really, anything. But for all the times we complained, we were certainly blessed to have walked these storied halls. 
I say we were blessed because, believe it or not, Luther North has become like a family. Like it or not, when you spend so much of your time in one place amongst the same group of people, that place becomes a home, and the people, a family. Luther was certainly a second home for me during my tenure here, and I hope it was for each one of you as well. So when I speak to you this evening, I am speaking to you not just as that rather odd math teacher you once had, but as someone who is leaving the safety of Luther North and moving on, just like you. So what is the message I am hoping you take away from this evening? I'm hoping the message has already been delivered, and I'm just here to make sure things were well understood. It is my fervent prayer that the lessons learned in your four years here will not soon be forgotten. Let's be honest, the lessons I'm talking about are not remembering the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, for those of you that have forgotten already, uh, or the difference between a combination and a permutation, stats people, order matters in the latter, not in the former, no, no, got nothing. How to solve a quadratic equation by factoring for the final time, it's multiply to the last, add to the middle, Michelle. <laughs> Let's face it, if those are the lessons I'm hoping you remember, I have a feeling both of us are going to be a bit disappointed. You're going to be disappointed when your college professors don't particularly care if you remember that stuff, except for you math, science, and engineering people, of course. Um, and I'm going to be disappointed in the number of people that actually remember it. And based on the number of laughs that I heard, that's probably most of you. No, the lessons I'm hoping you remember forever are the simple life lessons you learned every day here. One day, Rundio screaming at you to get that paper turned in is going to be a lesson on how to deal with a boss who's all about meeting deadlines. The lessons learned from Ms. Gaelic in the art room are going to help you see the world from your own unique perspective. The lessons learned in Wenzel's classroom will teach you how to stay focused in high-pressure business meetings. Because, let's face it, nothing prepares you for the pressure cooker that is a business meeting, like copious note-taking while attempting not to blink or breathe the wrong way for fear that Wenzel will unleash the full power of the Dean's office upon you. I'm, of course, just kidding there, Wenzel. Sort of. Uh, now, the lessons from my room, that's a little bit tougher. What the heck am I hoping you learned uh, from my class, aside from the obvious lesson of how to kiss up to your boss? That's right. I know every, I was everybody's favorite teacher when I let you watch numbers on Fridays. Uh, but seriously, what am I hoping you learned from me? To be perfectly honest with you, this was the hardest question for me to face as I got up here to speak this evening. Did I really teach you anything? It's the question that has kept me up at night for the past four years more often than I'd like to admit. Am I really teaching them anything? I sure hope I did, but I'm hoping that the lessons you learned from me were not all or, heck, even mostly math-related. I'm hoping that these lessons came in the brief interactions in the halls, the times where we talked during free periods or after school, or any of the many real interactions we shared throughout our time here. Did you learn anything in those interactions? Well, here's what I'm hoping you learned just in case you missed it the first time around. Work hard, but more importantly, take pride in your work. Nothing will bring you more joy than seeing the positive results of a project that you really poured your heart and soul into. One that you really did a great job on and figured everything out all by yourself. Develop relationships. This is another big lesson. Don't be afraid to talk to people and get to know who they really are. You never know when one of those relationships will turn into something great. A future job, a new friend, a spouse even. Believe in yourself. This is a big one. You're going out into the real world and you will be just a little bit more on your own than you were this past year. You have to have faith that you can achieve anything you set your mind to. I have seen what every last one of you is capable of when you simply have a little self-belief. So when you go out into the world, believe in yourselves. You are all amazing people. But the biggest lesson I hope I taught you is that you need to live a life that makes you happy. I know there were days that it didn't seem that way, but this job and each and every one of you brought me so much happiness. Getting to know this group of seniors brought me joy that I could never express in words. Being a part of Luther North, this place, this family, has made me very happy. Again, that's why this night is a little bit difficult for me. Leaving this place feels like losing a part of my family. I will come back to visit, as will each and every one of you, but I, I think a part of me and a part of each and every one of you will remain here. Let me leave you with this thought. 
live lives of passion, depth, and meaning. When you leave here today, you enter a new part of your journey toward adulthood. Take this opportunity, this moment, to embark on a journey that will make you happy as these past four years have made me. Every last one of you, I repeat, every last one of you is truly special. You are all unique and wonderful people. Take those unique talents, your unique gifts, and share them with the world. And through this, it is my deepest wish that you, all of you, find that one thing that makes you truly happy. I love you all, and I wish you the best as you begin the next phase of your journey. Thank you. Mr. Zoki, as Chairman of the Board of Trustees and Board of Trustees members in attendance, we present these students to you as candidates for graduation from high school. They have met the requirements of the North Central Association, the Illinois State Board of Education, 
and also the faculty of Luther High School North. Please withhold your applause so that the graduates' names can be heard. Ms. Ratsky is registrar. Please read the names of the graduates. Michelle Helen Absalon Reyes. Joseph Anthony Herbert Luce. Joanna Alvarez. Lyle Brady. Jennifer Ann Jensen. Samantha Lee Blaze. Cody Husby. Daniel Joseph Wharton. Gabriel Rios. Lindy Ann Wright. Raquel Carmela Pasoli. Raluca Birza. Michelle Rodriguez. Natalie Jane Lundsberg. Deanna Alyssa DeTolve. Stephanie Lynn Simpson. Victoria Sobecki. Kente Mixon. Onyx Espinoza. Allie Stevens. Kevin O'Hara. Flavio Wissar. Ryan Miles. Ashley Marie Moncada. Matthew David Helt. Rebecca J. Zilke. Emily Rose Charlo. Jasmine Torres. Patrick Murray. Christopher Ojeda. Harrison Saidis. James Baran. Ryan Mazurkowitz. Christian Randall. Matthew Wachowski. Alex Smolinski. Greg Gregory Trimbitis. David Lee Bernstein, Jr. Trevor Slobodian. 
Zachary Michael Saunders. Lindsay Kathleen Krakoka. The Julius Adorno. Sean Gary Flossie. Gina Mazzone. Jessica Lama. Josefina Gomez. Congratulations to the class of 2011. Each year, graduation honors are presented to the top students through the naming of a valedictorian and salutatorian. This year, our valedictorian is Michelle Helen Reyes. Her cumulative GPA for the four years is a 4.38. Michelle is a graduate of Grace English Elementary School. She will be continuing her education at Valparaiso University this coming fall. This year's salutatorian is a graduate of St. Paul Canfield. In his four years at Luther North, he earned a cumulative GPA of 4.22. Next year, he will also attend Valparaiso University. Our 2011 salutatorian is Joseph Luce. First, I'd like to take a moment to welcome family, friends, alumni, teachers, students, and all of you who have gathered here tonight for the final chapter of the class of 2011 in Luther North. As bittersweet as our departure from Luther North may feel, it would be an understatement not to acknowledge that this year may not have happened had it not been for the effort of the Save Luther campaign this past year and the partnership with New Life Community Church. If that hadn't happened, I'd not be standing here tonight, and the 47 graduates before you would not have the privilege of graduating from Luther North. And yet, Luther North is still alive, where even today we enter to learn, depart to serve, and daily prove the benefits of a Lutheran education. It was given a second chance, and tonight, these 47 young people are ready to go out and make their mark on the world. As much as this may seem a sad day, our final day together as classmates, we will always reflect on the good times that we've shared at Luther North. Each of us can draw memories from our years here at Luther North, no matter how long that experience lasted, whether it was four years or just one year. If you had the pleasure of being on cross country or track, you have memories of Mr. Grimm constantly yelling at you to run faster, or of Mr. Franklin belting out Jai Ho, or any other song that was popular on the radio during band rides, Ooh, those are some long van rides. Most of us still remember that 24-hour trackathon and throwathon last year that never seemed to end. Drama members have countless memories from the countless amount of plays they've put on the past four years, or the memories of Jimmy Two Dollar. We all remember how Walther would beat us constantly in every single sport, except softball this year. Thank you so much, ladies.
In more recent times, you remember how last week Monday those microwaves just disappeared from the calf. We'll, we'll never forget Miss Rundio and her never-ending supply of red ink. Or Mr. Strains, who cares way too much about American Idol. It's alright, I'm going to his alma mater. I could go on for hours, because these are countless memories of not only these past four years, but of these teachers we've encountered during our stay here. We each are blessed because they really do did get involved with us. On behalf of the class of 2011, I thank them for their countless efforts to improve each of us, not only in their respective subject matters, but also as young adults, as we continue to grow in our faith. No matter how many times we'd fail, they would always give us another chance to succeed. For four years we've called this place our home, but tonight marks the final time we can come through these doors as students. After tonight we will walk outside as alumni, the next group in a long line of successful graduates of Lutheran North, because I really see success among this class. Now we may not be considered the most academically, academically gifted or most athletically gifted, but each of us has talents that we can use for the glory of God and to change the world. We have skilled musicians, we have skilled artists, actors, scientists, writers, athletes, and the list goes on and on, because you, the class of 2011, have what it takes to make an impact on the world around you. Our world has been with the North for four years, but now that world is the college you journey to, or the job you will soon begin. Don't be afraid to get involved in college and to make an immediate impact while working in your job. As it's already been said tonight, the mission of Lutheran North is to serve God by developing productive and responsible Christian servant leaders for church and society. And during your four years, this mission has been taught, and now it's time for us to go out and change the world. Whether you become teachers, singers, engineers, athletes, or whatever else God wants us to be. As the great Confucius once proclaimed, wherever you go, go with all your heart. The future is calling each one of you. I challenge you, my classmates, is to answer the call and make this world a better place. Thank you. It is now my privilege to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2011, Michelle Reyes. Good evening once again to everyone. I was going to list all the categories, but we've heard them three times tonight. Um, I'd like to thank you all once again for coming out to celebrate the 57th annual Luther North graduation ceremony with us tonight. To my fellow classmates, I know a lot of you kept track of the number of days to graduation since the beginning of the semester, maybe even the beginning of the school year. But did any of you ever realize that exactly 1,383 days have passed since the first day of freshman year? I know, the weeks leading up to today made it seem at least twice that. In those 1,383 days, we've witnessed a lot of amazing things come to pass. People nearly broke school records, others qualified for state teams, some were in the newspapers, and maybe, if you were lucky, you witnessed Mr. Franklin wearing pants a few times. But the most amazing thing that came to pass over our time at Luther North is inarguably how it was saved from closure during April last year. The Luther North community was tasked with raising $1.8 million in one month, and almost immediately after the news came out, people banded together to bounce ideas around about how to erase the impossibly large sum of money in such a short amount of time. Phone calls were made, letters were sent out, and Facebook was bursting with wall posts and statuses about the situation. During this time, people were invited to write testimonials about what Luther meant to them. While there were countless reasons given, the general consensus seemed to revolve around how irreplaceable the people were, and the more you think about it, the more true it seems. Luther is home to an interesting group of characters. There's the girl who was always injured, the guy who was stuck in the 1970s, the girl who told British jokes, the Star Wars-obsessed dean of students, 
The Spanish teacher, whose laugh reminds me of a whistling teapot. She proved this message, so good. The Rachel Ray obsessed gym teacher, the drama director with a Fiji dwelling sidekick. And I really don't think we need to discuss Mrs. Rundio and her red pens again. Whether you are one of those people, or just laughed at, I mean, with them, I think we can all agree that the real Lutheran North experience comes from the people. Take a look at the person sitting next to you tonight. Do you realize, no matter who it is, you two probably shared something unforgettable over these past four years. If you guys are best friends, you probably have hundreds of good memories together. If you guys have never spoken before, you probably still have shared memories from a class, a school dance, or maybe just the senior trip. And if you guys are arch enemies, well, are you sitting together? Sure. Luther North is an educational institution, and after Mr. Wenzel has finished his post bowl fond day on the roof, and Mrs. Rundio has stopped showing off her dance moves at prom, we can remember that. But when you think about the most important things you've learned over the past few years, what do you think of? Do you think of the textbooks, or do you think of the teachers, the coaches, your classmates, or your friends? If you're anything like me, you probably think of the people. I know for a fact I might not even be standing up here if it weren't for a few people. There's Miss Radsky, who felt the best way to congratulate me on my good grades was to give me the speech to write. My salutatorian gave me some stiff competition for this spot over the past few years. Not even kidding, we used to compare headline grades every day. The valedictorian of 2009, who basically wrote me a how-to guide on how to be a valedictorian. Thanks, Chris. My drama family, who gave the shyest girl in the entire world enough confidence to talk for this long. And Lindsay and Hosey, I'm still shocked, and I love you both a lot. And my actual family, for their support and listening to me practice this speech over and over and over again. And of course, God, for, well, everything. But I digress. I think that we are all more deeply affected by those around us than we realize, and sometimes we forget and let them slip out of our lives without a second thought. People are irreplaceable parts of your life. Treasure the ones you're lucky enough to meet, and every memory you made together, because those people and those memories may have helped shape who you are today. Make an effort to stay in contact during college next year and the years after. Time goes by fast, and people go in and out of your lives so quickly, so you should never miss the opportunity to tell these people how much they mean to you. Don't forget, God put them all into your life for a reason, whether it was to help you pass math class or just to brighten a bad day. As people, each of you has far more power than you realize not only to affect each other's lives, but to achieve even your wildest dreams. Looking at the yearbook, I saw some pretty big aspirations. One of you wants to be an aerospace engineer. Another, a game designer. And if everything works out as planned, our class is going to have enough medical personnel to make up a small hospital, which will really come in handy during student council's annual blood drives. Yet, there are still a few of us who are going to college to figure out those dreams, and while it's unlikely that all of us are going to grow up to be millionaires, I'm sure we'll all find success in some way, shape, or form in the years to come. Although this may be the last time some of you hear me speak, Although in retrospect, this may also be the first time for some of you. I hope you all remember this advice. No matter how successful you are after today, remember what helped lead you to that point. Try and remember the difference between a hyperbola and a hyperbole. But more importantly, remember the people who tried to teach you that difference. Not just because it's courteous, but also because we will probably be on the mailing list for donations in a year or two. And remember to thank God for putting those people in your life as well. In short, students don't forget your wonderful teachers, both actual and figurative. And teachers, well, it'll be pretty hard to forget us after we've all friend requested you on Facebook. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for coming to this graduation, bearing with my speech, and perhaps even chuckling once or twice at my valiant attempts at humor. Happy graduation, class of 2011. The past 1,383 days have really been a pleasure. Thank you. A number of awards by our senior graduates are graduate, graduates with distinction for 2011 are Joseph Luce, 
Kente Mixon, Michelle Helen Reyes, and Rebecca Zilke. Each year, the music department presents two special awards. The Louis Armstrong Jazz Award was awarded to Kente Mixon, and the John Philip Sousa Award was given to Harrison Zaitis. Three of our senior students were selected as Illinois State Scholars. These students earn this designation by ranking in the top 10% of more than 60,000 students from Illinois high schools who competed in this year's program. Our 2011 Illinois State Scholars are Joseph Luce, Michelle Helen Reyes, and Rebecca Zilke. One senior has been recognized for his excellence in both academics and extracurricular activities. This award is named the Roger Schmoey Award of Merit, in honor of a former principal and then superintendent who strongly encouraged students to strive for excellence in both areas. This year's recipient of the Roger Schmoey Award of Merit is Kenty Mixon. Eight years ago, former principal Dr. Daly established the Servant Service Award. This award is given to seniors who have become shining examples of the school's mission statement through their unselfish service to the Luther North community. The 2011 Servant Service Award was given to Michelle Rodriguez. Each year, we identify students who have received scholarships to colleges and universities. The students whose names are called are asked to stand and be recognized. Please hold all applause until all names are called. E.J. Adorno has been awarded a Campus Merit Award of $1,000, a Foundation Scholarship of $621, and the President's Award for $2,000 from the University of Illinois. Sean Flossie has been awarded an academic scholarship of $23,800 from Dominican University. Lindsay Krakoka has been awarded $10,100 in scholarship money from Dominican University. Joseph Luce has received the Board of Directors Scholarship in the amount of $21,500 from Valparaiso University. Ryan Mazurkowitz has received $7,000 in academic scholarships from Roosevelt University. Gina Mazzone has received a $10,000 enrichment scholarship from Elmhurst College. Kente Mixon has received $38,900 in academic scholarships to Lake Forest College. Christian Randall has received a merit scholarship in the amount of $11,500 from Concordia University, Chicago. Michelle Helen Reyes has received an annual $16,000 Board of Directors Scholarship from Valparaiso University. Gabriel Rios has earned a $20,000 scholarship to Iowa State University. Michelle Rodriguez has received a yearly faculty scholarship in the amount of $11,500 from Concordia University, Chicago. Zachary Saunders has received $26,440 in scholarships from Dominican University. Emily Charlo has received an annual achievement award of $6,000 to Columbia College. Stephanie Simpson has received an athletic scholarship for full tuition and room and board for five years to the University of Central Arkansas. And Dan Wharton has received the ACE scholarship to Iowa State University. Our senior class of 45 stu students has earned a total of $247,840 in scholarship money. Please give them a round of applause.
One student has been recognized by the athletic department as a scholar athlete for his outstanding achievement in the classroom and on the athletic field. This senior is Kente Mixon. The following seniors have been recognized for possessing the, straight, the traits of scholarship, leadership, character, and service by being inducted into, into membership in the Lutheran North chapter of the National Honor Society. E.J. Adorno, Raluca Birza, Samantha Blaze, Lindsay Krakoka, Joseph Luce, Kente Mixon, Michelle Helen Reyes, and Rebecca Zilke. The following seniors have been identified by the various academic faculty to receive departmental distinction awards for excellence in that discipline. In technology, Gabriel Rios. In English, in English, Kente Mixon. In art, Raluca Birza. In music, Michelle Helen Reyes. In foreign language, Joanna Alvarez. In mathematics, Joseph Luce. In social science, E.J. Adorno. And in religion, Michelle Rodriguez. This concludes the academic awards for the class of 2011. Congratulations. I will now present Mr. Weeman with some closing remarks. Well, class of 2011, I guess I have the last word. You've heard advice and comments from your classmates, faculty, and alumni about LHN and what this all means. On behalf of the faculty and staff, I would like to say thank you for representing Luther North in such a positive way. I hope you will always keep LHN in your prayers, and we do hope you support the school in the future but mainly we want to hear about all of your success stories, which I know will be many. To all the alumni and families who supported LHN last year so that this graduation could happen, we say thank you from the bottom of our hearts and we'd like you to stand at this time, please. All alumni and faculty and families who have supported Luther North last year in the Save the School campaign, could you please stand up and be recognized, thank you. We would also, whoa, whoa. We would also like to thank all the parents and families who have supported Luther North over the past years. We have appreciated your involvement as you guided your young adult through high school. Graduates, make sure you give them a big hug and say I love you and thank you. I have to leave you with one last thought. You know the signs, enter to learn, depart to serve. In fact, they've been mentioned, I think, twice already. The thought is this. Once you understand that life's higher purpose is for you to make the world a better place, you will never ask what's in it for me. Because remember, if it doesn't come from here, this does not matter. God bless you. God bless Luther North. It is my honor to officially close the 2010-2011 academic school year.